green. Now you're green. Okay, so I'm not going to start over. You just may need to adjust your own volume. So <laughs> hopefully you all can hear me now. So we were talking about presser feet. So is there one that you are going to get this month, you think? Um, I, I want the 75. Yeah, the 71 is a great foot. I did just get the 71 foot before the special, and I've learned how to put my quilt binding on with it, and it is fabulous for doing quilt binding. So that might be something you want to try out. That's a good foot to look at. Yeah, so Barbara and I are planning for the future another Facebook Live where we talk about feet and, and the people in the store, what their favorite feet are. So that's coming attractions. But this month in March, all presser feet are 20% off. So that's a great, great deal. So then the third thing that I want to talk to you about is we have really big news about big books. Uh, March is, uh, Bernina celebrates March, but the owner of Artistic Artifacts, Judy, Judy Gula, also celebrates March as the birthday of Artistic Artifacts. And in doing that, this week only, it was from our Wednesday newsletter that went out until this coming Wednesday, Big books, all book, big books are 25% off. So this is a huge way to celebrate. Uh, Judy, instead of getting gifts for her birthday, is celebrating by giving us the, uh, gifts of the 25% off on the big books. These are the most awesome books ever. They are so informative and so well done. Any of them are a great investment. I happen to like the big book of feet because when I'm looking to do a project, I could see exactly which foot I need. And I like the big book of stitches because it gets me more into the decorative stitches on my domestic machine, which I have shied away from. And I really want to do more with that because I think I could add those to my quilting to add an extra dimension to my quilting. So those are my two favorites. And Catherine, what do you like? Right now I'm using the big book of embroidery, of machine embroidery a lot. And what I really like about it is it's a great handy reference. It's in my sewing area. And it saves me so much time from trying to look on YouTube mm -hmm. or trying to Google or find information. I can look at that big book and it's just all right there. The mm -hmm. information, charts, diagrams, you know, pictures, everything. So I really do like like the big books. So mm -hmm. I'm sure well I'll done. end up with a bigger library of yes, them as definitely. well. Yes, definitely. So, so let's talk quilting. Originally, we had said, and you may have read, that we were going to talk to you about quilting on the Q series and then also quilting on the domestic machines. But we found out as we got more into detail that we have so much we want to tell you about the Q series that we're going to break this up into two sessions. Mm -hmm. So today Barbara's going to talk about the Q series and then on March 30th we'll go into more detail about doing machine quilting on the 770 or 790. And Catherine that machine quilting is so this demonstrate and you can see that it's um, got quilting in the ditch that was done on the Q20 but I wanted to add some more curves to this and so this is the machine quilting pattern that I'm putting in on these parts of the bear paws and this is built into the machines and so I'll show you how to set up your quilt and your machine and we'll actually do some of the machine quilting on March 30th so so be sure to look forward to March 30th mark it on your calendar so you can see how Catherine does that yeah so now on to quilting and Barbara <laughs> so I I love quilting as everybody here in the store does um, when I first started quilting I saw that people tend to send their quilts out to get quilted and pay along our quilt by check as it's commonly referred to but I felt like that was taking away some of the uniqueness of my quilt and it didn't make it as much my quilt right. as I wanted it to be. So I needed to learn how to do this free motion quilting stuff to make my quilts all mine. Yeah. And this happened right before the pandemic. I got into this, so I had lots of time to practice during the pandemic, which is the key to success here. If there's nothing else that you learn, you need to practice a lot. Um, it's like learning to write cursive. That didn't come overnight. It takes a while to develop those muscle memories. So just practice. So that helped me a lot um, during the pandemic. And pardon me if I look at my cheat sheet here because I get nervous and forget what I'm supposed to be saying. <laughs> um, so I'm going to quilt today on this Q20 sit down. As you can see, we've got it all set up here. And the 20 means it has a 20 inch throat space. I have an extra large queen That's size quilt on here. here. 
and it fits just perfectly. So you could do large quilts on this. Um, this table has two leaves. I've got one of them, one of the side leaves open. The other is backed up against a long arm so it doesn't open at this point. The table, there's three different tables and you could also put a 16 inch throat space machine on a slightly smaller table if that's what your space allows for you. Yeah. These are the exact same machines that go on the frames. There's nothing different about them other than they're mounted on a frame versus, excuse me, in the sit down table. So all of the interface is exactly the same. So what you learn here, you're going to do the same thing on a long arm. I wanted to say too, I have one of these at home and I have a small sewing space. And so the, the leaves that come down are really nice because when I'm not using it, I can get it out of the way. These tables are on wheels. And so I can easily push it out of the way onto the corner. But then if I do have space, I like to leave one leaf up mm -hmm. because it gives me extra uh, horizontal space. Yeah, a lot and of extra work space. Yeah, I can mm -hmm. put the cover on this, but mm -hmm. then I still have a nice horizontal mm -hmm. I do the exact here. same thing, so leave one leaf this open. This is just so convenient that you can change the size mm -hmm. and the height. And this particular table is the height adjustable table that Catherine just mentioned. So as you can see, Catherine and I have a little height difference. She could raise <laughs> it if she needs. And then me being on the shorter side, I can lower the table. Um, so it's adjustable for any height and makes it the perfect height for you so that you're not hunching over and out in bad posture and get sore and tired so quickly. So that this is a great option for that. Um, there are other, a couple of other style tables too, so come in and see us and we could talk about all of those things. So one, I want to tell, I've had my machine about two and a half years and I, a couple of things I want to tell you that I really like about this machine. One of the first thing is, is this fabulous lighting in the throat space. Yeah. I don't need any extra overhead lighting. I have plenty of lighting and hopefully you could tell on camera how well lit the quilt is here. So you don't need, you know, to do acrobatics with all kinds of other lights trying to get enough light into your space. You've got it all right here. I also like it because everything that I need to do, I could do from my chair. I can thread my machine from my chair. I could wind a bobbin from my chair. I change my bobbin from my chair. My needles are all the standard Schmetz needles that you use on right. your domestic machine. So you could use whatever top stitch micro um, text or whatever you need for your project, um, easily accessible. Everything is right here in the front. I don't have to go to the back of the machine for anything except for the power. Once I sit down, I'm done. I can get on with my sewing. So um, I thought I would show you a little bit today on how I quilt on here, and um, I'm going to use I'm going to use the gripper ring today, and I've got an open toe free motion quilting foot on there because it affords me maximum visibility and that's what I like. I like to see where I'm going. Um, now Catherine said she doesn't use the gripper ring so I much. Don't. Let me get these. I, I, I use gloves and I brought these to show you that um, uh, like Barbara, I like to just, once I sit down and start quilting, I want to stay there and get busy. So I actually cut the ends off of my thumbs and index fingers of my gloves so that I could pull the bobbin thread up and I could thread mm -hmm. the needle and do things without constantly taking my mm -hmm, gloves mm -hmm. on and off, on and off. And we have gloves here that have the fingers already removed. For yes, you. and some grippy parts and mm -hmm. all that. It's just that I have and very then, old And we also gloves. have the full set of gloves here. So these are all on our website or if you're in the store, check them out in the store. They, they work equally as well. It's just a personal preference for the style that you like. Right. So, so I think that when you first start out on this, you try gloves, you try the gripper mm -hmm. rings, you try both together. But I think that it's really important to use one or the other because these quilts are big and it's much easier to use the tools to help move them mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Definitely. All right. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how easy you can see how big this quilt is on this table, but it's very easy to move around. Um, I'm just going to, so the, these gripper rings are nice, the ones that Bernina makes, because they have the opening that you could easily slide on and off. You don't have to um, uh, take it, take your needle up or, or your foot off or anything to get it on and off, which is really nice. So I thought I would just try to do a, a little bit here so you could see exactly how it works. 
Oh, another nice thing about the Q20 is that it uses the same foot pedal as the Bernina sewing machines. So if you have a Bernina sewing machine and you're used to that heel kick function of needle up and needle down, it makes it really convenient when you want to pull up your bobbin thread when you start quilting. And another thing I like about um, the, having the interface at front, I could switch from the BSR modes to the manual mode easily. And I do that a lot on this quilt. When I'm using the rule, when I'm doing ruler work, I change it to the ruler work, the BSR2. When I'm doing little tiny things like I'm doing here, these swirls and some stippling, I use the manual mode because it's just a little bit easier to maneuver in the manual mode. So the BSR is the built in Bernina stitch regulator. Exactly. And so uh, you do have three choices BSR1, 2, or manual. And like Barbara said, she's doing manual right now. So again, it's just, it allows you to have your personal preference to practice and find out what works best for you. So you can see how I can definitely move it around, even though it's a big quilt, it moves easily. And I'm from the school of puddling my quilts as opposed to rolling it up. Some folks like to roll their quilts. Yeah, we but do. I like to puddle. Okay. I find it easier for me to just puddle my quilt. Um, so you have to try and see what works best for you because not what works for me may not work for you. I like to keep my uh, machine up against the wall too so that as I'm quilting, the excess quilt doesn't fall off the back of the table. So then you have three sides of, of great space to use, the two leaves plus a wall at the back. The table also comes with some extension leaves that are stored underneath, and those leaves uh, work on the pull-out drawers so that you have table space under your left and right elbow as well. And th those are optional pieces that you would need to purchase separately from the machine. Um, just like the laser light, which I have on here and I love, I'm not sure I could sew without the laser light. I'm sure you saw the little red light. Um, and that tells me exactly where my needle is going to go next. So it keeps me on track and I don't get too far off, which sometimes I tend to do. So that's how easy it is to sew on this machine. Um, I think one thing to point out too is that Barbara's quilting is beautiful, but it's not a race. It's mm -hmm. just a nice, relaxing, smooth and slow kind of quilting. And so it's just so nice to be able to have this set up, come in, sit down, have everything ready, and then just slowly enjoy quilting. Kind of get into your zone. Yeah. And, and like Barbara, it, you get to finish your quilt totally right. from start start to the end so and now next saturday we will be doing a um, free motion quilting class a beginning free motion quilting class here in the store it is sold out but i want to let you know if you are interested in it to go ahead and let us know because if we have enough people that are interested we will put another class we'll post another class for that so um so definitely let us know so we can do that for you did you want to show what we're going to be working on yeah so so um we will be using this, this book here that we sell in the store um, as a guide for our free motion quilting class. And let me tell you a good tip on this. When you get this book or any other quilting book, take it to Staples or UPS or wherever and have them spiral bound it so that when you go to open it, it lays flat and you don't have your pages flipping and you can follow the diagrams because a lot of times you want to see, follow exactly the diagrams in the book. And when it lays flat, it's much easier to do that. So that's a real good tip on that. And we'll be working with some of the motifs from this book. And I've just put them on a quilt to make it easy to see. This isn't this beautiful. So each square has a different motif from the book. So we'll be going over, not all of these, but a lot of these. I can demonstrate them in the class and everybody will have an opportunity to try them out for themselves and ask any questions and kind of cheer each other on. Um, I think it, it'll be a really fun day. So those of you who are signed up, I think I hope you'll have a great time. And those of you who aren't, let us know if you're interested so we could add a class to that. I love the variety of stitches that you're going to go over because I tend to, 
kind of get in a rut and use the yes. same quilting yes. stitches all the time. Right. And, and there's always that question, how do I quilt this? Well, look at all the different options you right. have here on how to quilt this. This is your cheat sheet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> keep, exactly. Keep handy. And another uh, event I want to tell you about, if we've piqued your interest on the Q-Series machines today at all in this conversation, we can. Um, we have an event on April 5th and 6th. It will be held by Bernina educator Betsy Carlson. She will be coming here to Artistic Artifacts, and she will have four sessions. Three of the sessions will be hands-on with the Q-Series machine in a sit-down. Um, but like I said earlier, everything that you learn there transfers easily to the long arm. And then she will do one session on the Cumatic, which is the computerized long arm sewing, um, to give you a little hands-on time on that to see um, how you like it. If you're interested in that, there'll be a great opportunity for you to ask all the questions to the educator and have a little bit of hands-on time. So look on our website under the uh, Workshops and Events tab and scroll on down to April 5th and 6th, and you'll see the description of the classes, and you could sign up right there. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to call the store and we will try to help you with those questions. So, and just, and I brought another quilt here. When I got my cue about two and a half years ago, this is the first quilt I quilted on, on cue. This is amazing. And I just, again, it, it gives you lots. It, it was a sort of a sampler tile. This is an Amanda Murphy pattern but I kind of embellished on her quilting suggestions a little bit because I wanted to try a whole bunch of new things on my machine. So this gave me the opportunity to do that. So that was really fun. So it, this is, it is all done on the sit down machine. So you too can do this. You can work on that stack of UFO quilt tops that you have right. and get them all quilted. It is faster than quilting on a domestic machine. It is the long arm is even faster than quilting on the sit down. So food for thought for you on how you want to get your quilting done. Right. A lot of it depends on space and, right. uh, that you have available. And, and the uh, sit down also, it's very creative because it's free motion, right. what you're doing and ruler work. So you, you're in control of what, what's going on to your quilt. Little, excuse me, a little seeky this morning, but everybody is loving the quilt so far. Good, yeah. good. Carl says, uh, looking forward to the free motion class with some nice Spanish guitar music. <laughs> so if you have any questions, please let Catherine and I know, and we'll be glad to um, get back to you with those answers. And please stay tuned for the 30th when Catherine finishes, uh, does the demonstration on her hoop quilting. Finish is not guaranteed, but, <laughs> but working on it is. Work, work, yeah, quilt in progress. And she'll uh, show you how to do some quilting right. in the hoop with your embroidery module, which is a really great idea. It is. Yeah. So. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you later.